Toyota D4D engine problems. Ha <laughs> ha I'm gonna tell you all about it. Everything that comes to memory from the worst, the top of the list, all the way down, all the problems they've had. But first, we really need to work out which D4D engine we're talking about, or are we talking about all of them? What does D4D stand for? Is it the 120 Prado? Is it the Hilux? Is it the 150 Prado? Is it the 1KD FTV? Is it the 1GD FTV? Is it the V8 and the 200 series? They're all called D4D. So firstly, what does D4D stand for? I think everybody's confused enough. Direct for diesel, okay? I'll give you a little bit more detail. So, you know, if you want to remember it, just think direct for diesel. In this case, direct injection, four-cylinder, common rail, diesel engine. But how does that make sense? Because the V8 is also called a D4D, isn't it? Well, it certainly gets a bit confusing if it was direct four-cylinder diesel. Maybe it's direct four valves per cylinder diesel. Anyway, one thing for sure is it's definitely a direct injection common rail diesel engine. And all the Toyota range vehicles in the diesel range, pretty much that I can think of after their common rail are called D4D. So let's just be clear on that part of the confusion. We could be talking about a lot of different engines here. So I think we just need to be clear, you know, so you understand the concern with the D4D thing, right? So we're better to refer to engines if you have a look on your VIN identification plate in your door under your bonnet, depending on what year vehicle Toyota you've got. And you'll either, by looking at your engine, you'll have, if you've got a 120 Prado, for example, it's a bit older, you might have the 1KZTE, we just call that the 1KZ. After that was this one, that's the 1KD. Um, that could be the one people are talking about, so we'll do that engine first. If you had a 150 Prado, you could also have the 1KD, like the other one we showed at the start of the video. Same engine, but instead of having intercooler on top, it's in front, so it looks a bit different. A few things different like that, but same power and torque output. Um, and of course, then you've got the 1GD. So it's 1KD FTV, 1GD FTV, and you've got 1VD, V8s and all that. But so you just use the first three letters, keeps it simple. One KZ, one KD, one GR if you've got the V6, one GD if you've got the 2755cc little diesel engine with the separate problems. So let's do this one first because I think when people search for Toyota D4D engine problems, I think this is the one they're talking about. Maybe it is certainly the most popular. Um, eventually there'll be probably more one GD sold if there hasn't already but this is certainly there is a lot of these engines out there so if you're looking at this video and listening still you probably want after some information to work out whether you should buy one of these or whether you should sell one if you've got one or what sort of problems you could expect to happen and why it's going to happen so let's start off with this engine like I said number one problem the highest ranking by far problem that these have and how common is it number one is absolutely nothing and that's the problem generally they have no problems at all whatsoever now there's components around the engine that might have problems um, very rare it's all toyota quality stuff this is one of the most reliable protos and engines ever built okay very reliable so there's no number one problem because there's no big common problem and even on the 1kz and the 1gr um, I won't say the 1GD, there's more common problems on that, um, which you obviously know about. We'll get to that one, you know, DPF being clearly the number one. Um, we'll get to that. But the 1KD, there's nothing that's that regular and predominant that I'd call it the biggest problem. But the one everyone's worried about is the cracked piston. So let's make that the number one. The cracked piston! The dreaded crack piston! Oh no, I'm going to get a cracked piston! Oh no! Anyway. It's really not that common, of course. All the bad news you hear online, as soon as it happens to people, that's when they hit Google and start searching and get on all the Facebook groups. And if it's ever happened, you've probably heard about it on Facebook. And even though that would seem like there's a lot of them, and there probably is a lot in comparison to how many there are, but percentage-wise, it's so small. I mean, we've got a massive community of Prado Hilux owners, and years go by without cracked pistons. As they get older now, and obviously that maintenance and injector replacement and other things, we'll get to that in a minute, causes of the number one and only problem really. It's really the only problem. Isn't that awesome that an engine has only one problem 
the bloody thing's otherwise bulletproof and it rarely happens. And most things you can do to avoid the problem anyway. There's things you can do to avoid the problem 99.9999999% of the time. And there's a system you can get into where even if it does happen to you, you can have free towing, you can have a free engine, you know, like how awesome is that? Um, so definitely probably the best option, but each to their own. Um, some people think I'm telling you this because it benefits me. Well, it doesn't matter who owns the car. If you sell it, somebody else buys it. Somebody ends up with it anyway. Someone needs injectors, someone needs an engine, somebody needs whatever. We're just here to help. Doesn't bother me if uh, the phone goes quiet and we've got nothing to do, it means more holiday. So it really doesn't bother me. Okay, 100%, I swear on anything you like, it doesn't bother me, right? A little bit of work would be good for something to do to keep me busy. But if you don't keep me busy, then I'll find something else to do because I need to do something. Like I said, more holidays, more videos on 4 Before Adventures instead of 4 Before Diesel. Hey, how would that be? Awesome. Anyway, some people are getting sick of the waffle and they've gone already. So, look, crack piston. That's the number one. Let, what else happens to the... We're talking about engines here. We're not talking about ancillaries, things that are bolted on like, you know, alternators or compressors or starter motors or whatever. We can get to that, but it'd make it a long video. So why don't we have a separate video later? Because that'd be more general between all the engines because, you know, your water pumps and your alternators. And it's going to be the same, doesn't matter which engine it is, with that sort of general stuff. It's general information, could be on any makes and model. And let me be clear here, there's other makes and models that crack pistons in diesel engines. So it's not like a Toyota thing. Okay, there's pistons that look exactly the same that come out of other engines. You could open up a Ranger engine with a cracked piston and people wouldn't know the difference to a Toyota in a photo online, that sort of thing. So just be aware of what you're looking at and don't think because you sold your Prado or your Hilux and you got a Ranger that you're bulletproof. I think what we should do now is get through the other engines before we rewind and then maybe go back to the, the top causes. And we've probably talked about it in other videos, but there's new people around, there's people that miss videos. So look, Let's go to the next engine. Um, let's rewind. The 1KZ. What are the top problems with that? Now, once again, I'm not here bagging any of the engines. I think they're all great engines. Um, even the 1GD is a good engine. I just think it's undersized for the size of the vehicle it's in, even more than this. I mean, this is bare minimum. It's undersized. But I'll tell you what, you can feel the cubes there compared to the 2755cc. Even though they've tuned it up now and it goes all right, um, it's a rever, yet you can't. The power doesn't feel any different, to be honest. It's a smooth, quiet rever. It's very laggy, regularly at a noise that fucking had of me, I tell you. Put the foot down the other day. Yesterday, day before, I was waiting. I reckon it was three seconds before anything happened. It's like, mate, I'm going to get cleaned up here, you know? Like, you know how long that is? Three seconds waiting for the car to start moving. Who else has got a 1GD since 2020 with the remap? We'll call it the remap one to keep it simple. That notice how lat it's sort of laggy or non-responsive. You put the foot down, you're just waiting waiting for it to happen anyway. So that's a problem. That's not that's not a, a, a mate. We're think, talking in this video more major problems. Like people are looking for cracked pistons. So we're going to get back to why that happens a little bit. <coughs> so 1KZ we're meant to be talking about, but we're having a chit-chat here, so it's all good. The 1KZ is a really good engine, generally bulletproof as well like this one. But if you want to call crack pistons common and be worried about that, this is what to be equally worried about to 1KZ. There's a couple of things that happen. I've told you already. The heads, they can crack, okay? The glow plugs, they can fall to pieces. They can get stuck in the engine and cause you all sorts of problems. The pieces fall off, they end up in the combustion, and it's right off the engine. If you don't do your oil changes every 5,000 Ks, like the book says, the soot loading the oil... It won't protect the engine, it'll damage the engine, and you'll need a new one at about 400,000 Ks on average, okay? This is what I specialize in. I hear about a lot of stuff that you guys don't hear about or see in videos, and you don't get to read online, because I don't write it, neither does anyone else. They just crap on whatever. This, I get a lot of people contacting me about these vehicles, and it doesn't all get into videos and posts and that sort of thing, right? It goes on all day, right? Every day, week after week, month after month, year after year. So that's what happens, right? So regular service on any of these engines, oil, coolant is gold, okay? That is the lifeblood and fluids of your engine. Keep the cooling system in Mickey Mouse condition. Keep your engine oil clean. 
You don't have to do 5000K oil changes on these engines anymore once you've got your solution because the oil stays clean. You're just wasting money. 10,000K is fine. Once a year, 10,000K. Is it crazy? Can you hear me? You want to hear me? Once a year, 10,000 kilometers, the engine will just go bloody forever. It's unbelievable. Whichever comes first, once a year, 10,000Ks, if you don't have any dirty EGR stuff going into any of your diesel engines because the oil stays clean with these common rails. Anyway. So much bonus information on the side, but some people don't like that. Just get to the point, would you? I am at the point, didn't I say? Heads, glow plugs, they're your biggest ones. That's what we're going to talk about. Biggest problems. What else is there? Okay, so glow plug, look, injectors, you're not going to crack pistons. It's going to get smoky. It's going to make Toyotas look bad. It's good to put a fresh set of injectors probably every 200K um, on those 1KZs. Brand new, genuine ones. Like I said, we haven't got them in stock at the moment, but the video is not about that. You can watch the videos and you'll figure it out. There'll be a playlist on 1KZ stuff, okay? So check it out. But heads, so what does that mean? Heads and glow plugs. So glow plugs, I recommend you change them every 100,000 Ks. Too late now, I know, but you've got to be very careful. Pieces don't fall in when you take them out. Look at the end of the glow plug, see if it's cleanly broken off or it's been gone for ages. If it's just cleanly broken off, you might have a piece in the engine you want to get out because it's 50-50 when you start the engine. Is it going to go out or is it going to hit and then get pressed and end up burning a hole through a piston or something? It has cost people engines, 100%, I guarantee it, okay? People tell me, what, oh, I've got a new engine, and I go, let me guess, the, and they go, how did you know? Well, because this is what happens. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Anyway, I'm not telling you I'm good or anything. It's just I've got the experience, so I know these things. Okay, so glow plugs, every 100,000. Heads, keep your cooling system in Mickey Mouse condition. Careful what bull bars and winches and lights and everything you put up front to block your airflow. You want your... Cooling system in mint condition. You need to remember it's a big, heavy brick four-wheel drive. doesn't matter what engine it is. And when you're going up those hills, particularly towing, it's going to make a lot of EGT. It's going to make a lot of heat. It's going to make a lot of heat in the cooling system. You should probably back it off. Just take it easy. Don't push that pedal too hard. Uh, keep the revs up a little bit. Towards 3,000 revs is probably better. Some people think revving it's working it hard. No, revving it's getting air through the engine, keeping it cool. If you keep it low... You know, oh, I'm only under, I'm only on 1500 revs, you're in a higher gear. No, you're actually working it hard, making heat in a diesel engine. It's, it doesn't work that way. You really got to watch the video. Subscribe, turn the bell on. Anyway, so that's your 1KZ problems. Glow plugs and heads cracking, not a big deal. It's not a whole engine. Oh, and of course, like I said, not if you don't do the regular oil changes enough, you might end up needing an engine. So you could say that's a crappy engine and da da no, no, it's awesome. It's just how it is, right? They had a bit of issue with the quality of the heads. Glow plugs, well, they don't last as long as we'd like them to in that engine. Um, and oil service, well, it's just you didn't do it. If you did what they said, it'd be fine. So it'll probably go forever then, right? Um, and if you keep everything in Mickey Mouse condition, some people are going to get unlucky. Once again, like the cracked piston, it's very rare. It's very rare that it happens, but I believe there's always going to be a reason. And with the right maintenance from the start, Following these guidelines, I believe it's avoidable once again, like the other engines. I'd, I've had a couple of 1KZs, I never have any head problems, never had any glow plugs falling in. Regular oil change every 5,000 k yeah, it got black pretty quickly with that EGR, but you know what you can do. <coughs> Watch the videos, okay? So, um, the 1GR, awesome engine, big grunty V6. I'm not a fan of it again, stop start driving, very hostile in and out of car parks and driveways, and that you know, it can be a bit. Hostile is my word. Um, awesome out on the highway when you're cruising along in your highway speeds and you want to get to bloody Sydney or Adelaide in a day and you want to do it quick or whatever. You've got dual highway most of the way these days. But look, when it comes to overtaking and you need to overtake, um, that's the time where the V6 comes in. You can just really get into that thing and it absolutely gets past everybody. You know, but remembering you've got speed limits. So technically you're not meant to be going over 110 anyway, which these diesel engines do quite easily. But we know what happens when you're overtaking, even though it's also illegal to speed up when someone's overtaking you. Yep, did you know that? It is, it's written. Um, but people do that. They do it quite often. They do it by accident. They do it on purpose. They think it's funny. It's quite dangerous because you're not going to have it head on you're gonna cut them off the road before you have a head on because you're better off to do that. So therefore they've put themselves off into the scrub. So we'll see how much they're laughing when that happens. Anyway, dash cam footage probably comes in handy, but um, there you go. Um, we're not talking about that in this video. So many things to talk about. Get you Am I getting you thinking? Do you like it? Hit the like button if you like it. Okay, so we've done the 1KZ, we've done the 1KD, um, the, the 1GR. We're mainly waffling about that. Awesome engine. The only real issue it has is the same as the other engine, oil changes and coolant changes. It doesn't have anything, you know, it can, it can have head problems just like the 1KZ, they do. 
The 1KD, let me be clear, the 1KD doesn't have head problems. Never even heard of one that I can credibly go, yep, if someone's done a head on it, it's been misdiagnosed, right? Never ever is there a head or head problem on a 1K. This is what I mean. The engines don't have any other issues at all. So that's a big positive. It doesn't have what the V6 has. It doesn't have possible head gaskets, right? It doesn't have the big timing chain leak at the front, okay? So there's some issues with the, the petrol engine. You really got to keep the oil changes up to it. That one, it's every 5,000 Ks or six months, whichever comes first, oil changes in my book, okay? Oil filter every 10,000 is fine. Biggest issue is written off engine because the oil pickup's blocked from lack of oil changes. The petrol that contaminates the oil, every time it puts a coating on that oil pickup, another coating and it just builds up. It's like another coat of paint till the holes close. So it's not carbon like what can happen in these, which is in, related to the injectors. We'll just have to do, check the injector information playlist if you want more information on the crack piston thing and the block door pickup. I didn't really go into that, did I? I didn't talk about the block door pickup on this, but I did say it all comes down to maintenance. So if you're following any sort of maintenance, mine or Toyota's, you won't have a block door pickup. It's all because of the lack of... So the maintenance is key. Is this coming through? Um, so oil changes on the V6. Coolant changes. It's an all alloy engine. You can get corrosion going on there. Wrong coolants, mixed coolants. You don't want any of that. The coolant is gold. Remember what we said, lifeblood. The oil and the coolant is the lifeblood. You want it clean. You want regular changes. I've said it in many videos before. Tell me how many times you reckon you're in the comments. Tell me how many times you've heard me say, I look for an excuse to drop the coolant on this, right? You've seen it. You've seen it in videos. It's beautiful. I, I want it out within two years. I don't add water. I don't flush. It's clean as anything. I drop it and I refill it with genuine coolant, super long life coolant. We know what it is. We're all using the same thing. It's gonna stay new and clean forever. It'll need a new tank before it needs anything else to keep it looking good because the heat and the old plastic, it'll eventually deteriorate 430 odd thousand Ks so far in 16 years, whatever it is. So, you know, it's gonna get worse. Things are gonna get worse before they get better. That we are replacing components on this, have you seen, to keep it reliable? That's how we roll as it gets older for remote outback travel in Australia. Need to keep it reliable. Okay, so V6, yeah, oil changes is key. If you're gonna buy one, I highly recommend you get the sump off and check the oil pickup, make sure it's not blocked. You can't tell that much looking down the hole over this side, it's definitely a risk. Engines are hard to come by. You can't get a new engine for the V6 and the 120 anymore. Last time I got a price, it was 18 and a half grand. Can't get them. Um, the 150, yep, yeah, 18, 18 and a half grand. You know, I don't know if you can get them or not. Very expensive, rebuild people. Can't do the job right, we've already seen all that. So you do not want one of these cars with a V6 that's got a blocked oil picker. These engines, no problem. You can still get them under 10 grand, right? With supplied and fitted, 15 grand, you got a brand new heart in the beast. It's not really a risk, is it, when you look at it that way? Job done. I'm talking a good job with a new engine. I'm not talking about a rebuild. Bugger the rebuilds. Anyway, we only go through one or two engines a year because our people that listen, they don't really have these issues. It's always the random, you know, other people that haven't been on the videos, they're busy, 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 they don't have all this information. So V6, what else? So it has a lot. It has a lot of oil leak issues, but I'll say it's mainly related to oil changes. So once again, the lifeblood, lubricating the engine, stopping the oil pickup from getting blocked in the V6, helping look after the seals because it's the contamination, the petrol in the oil that gets to the seals that makes them go hard, that ruins the seals. So oil changes are everything. Oil's cheap. You buy a bottle of oil on special for 30, 40 bucks to fill up your um, V6 engine. You know, it's just crazy that you wouldn't do that. You know, every six months maximum, even even if you did in three or 4,000 Ks, you know, it doesn't matter how many thousand Ks, if you don't drive it every six months, every six months, that means you should do short trips, cold starts, where most engine wear happens, you want the best oil in there, right? You don't want it going bad. I can't really think of anything else. It's just mainly those oil leaks. There is other issues with the rest of the vehicle because of the fuel system, you know, fuel gauges, fuel hoses and stuff like that with a petrol model. So there's, they certainly offset each other. Um, you pay a lot more to run the, in a fair comparison, if this was to get 10 litres per 100 Ks, the V6 gets 14 litres per 100 Ks. That's what it is. Now people can say, I get 12, I get 11, I get 13, I get 16, I get 18. Um, I get eight in one of these, I get nine, I get 10, I get 12. It doesn't matter in a fair comparison, it's 10 versus 14. So you can work out your fuel on that. It depends how many Ks a year you do. Um, you might, some people go, oh, injectors, no, 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 well, the fuel more than pay, the fuel saving more than pays for the injectors. And then you've got all the other issues that you can have with the V6, like valve cover leaks, rear mains, crankcraft, crankshaft seals, water pumps leak on both. Let's not get into that too much. Um, 
Last engine, let's move to that 1GD because I've been waffling long enough, bit of a long video, but you get that, fun and games. Um, the last engine, the 1GD, which came out in Australia in 2015, right? So DPFs, that was when DPF was introduced on that engine in Australia. That's when it all happened. And I was saying for the, in the lead up, like I sort of do now, because they're talking about a diesel hybrid, I said, hold position. 1KD FTV, last of the best, hold position. Some people listen, some people didn't. All, no problem, whatever you want to do. And some people have got the 1GD and they go, yeah, and maybe it is the best option, but maybe it's only young and just wait for you, your list of problems later. But everybody knows about the dreaded DPF. It's that big that there was a class action on it, right? So there's no argument there about how big it was because there was a class action, right? So that is by far the most problematic Toyota diesel engine in a Prado in the last 15, 20 years. Then there's no argument again, the timing chain guide issues on the 1GD engine, okay? It's a big problem. Um, there's camshafts that lose their hardening. I think we should just stop there. It's a really problematic engine. There's a lot of people that are lucky. There's people that have done, don't worry, there's people who have done 200,000 Ks more or less and had no issues at all, which is great. I don't know how many there are, you know, because there was a class action. There's a lot. Toyota are really good at keeping things quiet and not letting the information out. So I don't work at a Toyota dealership. I don't specialize in 1GDs. We service the old one for like super VIP clients, people we know, or someone that's really well-mannered that sends that message through at the right time and they really insist on waiting and they really want to get in the workshop. We do a few because, you know, that's how we get to know the vehicles also. So we do a few, but we keep it to a minimum because... To be honest, I don't want to get involved with... That's why I specialise in Toyotas. That's why I do what I do. Very busy years ago and narrowed it down and I only want good, reliable cars. Why do you think I own three 1KDs? I'm complete confident in it. And if it does crack a piston, we've got a good value for money solution. I still think it's the greatest car. Awesome engine. Engines are cheap and easy to replace. As far as I'm concerned, that's what we're used to, I suppose. <laughs> We've seen the 1GD engines in the photos at um, the scrap metal yard. So, you know, we know what happens with those. They're good at getting rid of those. You can't get much out of people at the dealerships. They do their training at least one day a year. And part of that is, shh. Okay, so anyway, I mean, they're all good engines. They're great. They're still the best cars. They're probably still the best engines. And, you know, when the most famous one's down, everybody wants to put a boot in. It's kind of a bit like that with Toyota, you know. So the whole class action... Had to happen to Toyota. It didn't happen to Subaru with all their DPF problems, did it? it didn't happen to Nissan or Mazda or any other make or model that had DPFs for 10 years before that, that ongoing problems. I mean, I know customers. I didn't touch them. I said, no, I'm not going that. Well, Sanyong Rexton, man, you know, we serviced one of those for a while and then eventually, you know, it's like, it just makes you look bad, but you're the one that serviced it, you know? Like, so, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I didn't build the car. I didn't design it. It's a heap of, you know, what? I don't like it. I don't want to have my name reputation associated with those vehicles right and it's a bit like that with the 1gd because later on there's going to be these problems that are known problems there's a list of known problems um they're gonna if you've been lucky so far that's great and hopefully you are lucky i'm not telling you, you should go sell your car it's up to you you make your decision i think all the engines are good i said that i still think it's good it's just even more undersized it's really great the remap version on the highway with torque and holding speed on hills and towing and you don't get that lag, that, or, you know, the stop start driving. So it's a really great highway car, mate. Credit where credit's due. I'm telling you, it's pro the best Prado combination Prado with that remap six speed auto by far, not even by a little bit. It absolutely, I don't want to swear all over this, okay? So this is good. I'm happy with this torque and the transmission and all that, and I'll get it to work pretty well. But in the 1GD remap, that torque and that transmission software. It's second to none. And ours only does highway cars. It'll be the best condition, best looked after um, vehicle. It gets out straight on highway cars. That's all it does. It doesn't go to the shops. It doesn't go to school and back. To, you know, it might go once every now and then. But point is, generally, it does all these long trips. It's done 63,000 Ks in two years, whatever. It's not doing a lot at the moment. It's having a break at the moment because this one's getting out. It wants to get out and do some big trips. So we're going to get out and put some Ks on it. Rack up probably 10,000 Ks over the next couple of months on some trips. And butter bing, butter boom, right? So I hope I've given you the information. Um, doesn't matter which one of these vehicles you got, you should always have your RAC top level towing cover if you're traveling more than 100 k's from home. And of course, only the wisest people that waited till the end got that reminder. Oh, that's right, I've been meaning to do that. Thank you very much. Put in the comments, let me know if you were that person. 
hit the like button, subscribe. We'll catch you on the next video and we'll talk a bit more about maybe, because when people do that search, I think they're searching what goes wrong with this D4D engine. So we'll put all the top reasons of what the contributors and what the causes of the crack piston are. And maybe we'll do that on the other engines as well. We'll see how this goes. All right, people, have a nice day. Catch you on the uh, next video. See ya.